Hey, what's up, Zach here. When patients used to ask me if wool was a good material for socks, I would consistently say no. And when people kept telling me to try merino wool, I just kind of blew it off because I kind of had my favorites I'd recommend. And at times you just kind of get stuck in your own ways with that sort of thing. That was until Bomba sponsored a video of mine actually last spring, and they sent me a pair of their merino wool performance running socks, which surprised me so much, I talked them into sponsoring another video explaining them because they were such a superior performing sock in a variety of applications. So thanks to Bombas for sponsoring this video and let's get into it. And at least to me, the most annoying thing about traditional wool is the itch and what is causing that itch because traditional wool has really thick, coarse fibers. It can kind of prick the skin leading to itching and then in some cases, chronic irritation, which is why in the past, I've just steered patients away from wool. And honestly, it's been my own bias that's gotten in the way of me giving merino wool a chance. But once I did, I was kind of humbled and obviously completely sold on it. And what I thought was marketing turned out to be really solid, interesting science. Now, merino wool is obviously very different from a traditional sheep's wool as it comes from a merino sheep, which at first thought, yeah, who cares? But it is pretty interesting. People started breeding merino sheep in Spain all the way back in the 12th century looking for a softer wool. When they started looking at the fibers being grown by these particular sheep, they found their hair was only one third the diameter of human hair. So instead of that coarse traditional wool jabbing our skin, the merino wool was so thin, it just bends and gets out of the way. And what also came from selective breeding the merino sheep with their merino fibers is those merino fibers can absorb 30% of their own weight in moisture and still feel dry, which makes them perform like a dry product and not a sopping wet one. And that ability to compartmentalize moisture creates a barrier layer between the sock and the outside environment, creating almost a climate controlled zone on the opposite side, which is the sock skin interface. And when the temperature outside is colder than that skin sock layer, the fibers merino wool, because they're irregular in shape, will trap more warm air while allowing the moisture through, which prevents more of a cold foot or more of a trench foot type issue. And when the air temperature outside is hotter than in the sock, the sock will take the sweat you produce, vaporize it, then exchange that vapor with the outside environment, causing a cooling effect, just the opposite. And like I just mentioned, most of the drying, heating, and cooling effects come from the shape of the merino fibers and how they don't wick sweat, but they vaporize it. So whereas a synthetic would actually take the sweat and hold it, they would wick it away from the skin, the merino wool will turn it into a vapor, which also makes the product feel lighter as you work out. Because unlike a synthetic that's holding onto that water in a merino wool product, the water has been vaporized. And because merino wool, and just wool in general, General is a natural fiber, like all hair, skin, and nails, it has keratin in it, which is a building block of your skin, which is your biggest organ. And that's able to bend and move with you, resist abrasion, protect your bones, muscles, and other organs. Those wool fibers have those same building blocks, making them ridiculously strong. And what I also really like particularly about the Bombus Merino wool blend is that they have woven spandex in them to give them a more kind of second skin feel, plus that Hextech, which is another moisture wicking and venting design within the manufacturing of the sock. So you're getting the best of a traditional merino sock, plus the best aspects of a poly blend in the sock. So not only are you getting wicking, but also vaporizing. And all that science and engineering is all well and good, but when you talk about real world durability, I just took this Bombus Merino wool sock on a 350 mile trail bike ride, including a 2000 foot hike and then downhill section through thick brush, only using the running crew. And after finishing, they look no different than the day I got them in the mail. I had zero issues drying after a few rainstorms we went through and had dry feet the entire way during the hot, humid last three days of our ride. So is Merino wool the only product you should ever get when looking at socks and shirts? Well, no, everybody has their own preferences. And sometimes I do like a little bit more the feeling of more cotton poly blends or poly blends. However, if you are looking for a sock for more moisture and temperature control, especially if you're playing outdoors in cold weather conditions, especially if they're a little bit more damp conditions, merino wool socks are going to keep your feet a little bit more dry and warm and prevent a lot of the skin issues from when your skin gets damp and cold. So I'd say in those situations, yeah, merino wool is clearly superior. And even in really hot, humid summer conditions, if you're looking for kind of the best drying effects of a sock, keep your foot more dry and then more cool, then yeah, merino wool is definitely up 
there, especially if you're somebody looking for more of a natural product. And if you do want to pick up a pair of Bombas Merino wool socks, I will leave a discount link in the description below, as well as kind of my favorite blends of Bombas Merino wool. They do have a lot to choose from. And you can feel good when you buy one of their socks, because when you buy one, then they'll donate one to someone in need, which is why I like working with them so much. Also, when you buy a Bombas sock, you can kind of count on their durability. Uh, more than a lot of other socks I have tried over the years, if you've checked out my kind of best sock videos over the last few years, a lot of those socks have kind of gone by the wayside. I've had to throw them away because their durability just wasn't there. Uh, all the Bombas socks I've ever tried, I still have in my closet because they're still performing just like the day I bought them. So when you buy a Bombas sock, you're getting what you pay for. You're not going to have to replace them anytime soon. However, if you do, they do have a guarantee on their product. So you can have a lot more confidence buying those versus some other companies where you're not sure if they're going to start wearing holes in them after a week or if they're going to last you longer. So if you do want to check out a pair, I will leave a link in the description below. And thank you again to Bombas for sponsoring these sock videos. I do love doing sock videos. I know people that have been watching this channel for a while will know that I love talking socks. And I do have another video coming out in this series explaining more compression socks. So if you do want to check that out, make sure you're subscribed down below. And if you want to see a little more of a variety of Bombas' other line of socks, make sure you click into this video up above. Respect rubber and foam, and of course, merino wool. I'll see you in the next video.